to welcome you to this timely discussion hosted by the International Republican Institute on Albania's April 25th elections and what they mean for the country's democracy. Albania held parliamentary elections on Sunday in which the ruling Socialist Party led by Prime Minister Edi Rama won an unprecedented third term. Based on the results, the Socialists gained 74 of the 140 seats in parliament, giving them a majority. The opposition Democratic Party and Socialist Movement for Integration had announced a possible post-election alliance before Sunday. Together, these two opposition blocs uh, would have 63 seats in the new parliament. Uh, voter turnout was high, higher than in the last elections in 2017 at 46%. International and domestic observers have said that while the elections were generally well organized and the government did implement several election reforms before the vote, there remain obstacles to completely free and fair elections in Albania with allegations of vote buying, the use of state resources in electioneering and instances of pre-election violence. What do these elections mean for the future course of Albania's democracy? Will a third Edi Rama government be able to tackle the problems of endemic corruption that have plagued Albania for decades? There have been concerns that media freedoms are eroding in the country. Will this change? Will the opposition return to parliament and play a constructive role in the country's politics? And what do the elections mean for the country's path towards joining the European Union? To help us answer these questions, we are delighted to have with us leading figures in the three main political parties in Albania. First of all, Taulant Bala is Gener General Secretary of the Socialist Party. Yorita Tabaku is a member of the executive committee of the Democratic Party. And Klaida Joshi is a member of the executive committee of the Socialist Movement for Integration. Thank you for joining us to offer your insights. Uh, before we start, I'd like to point out that this event is being live streamed on Facebook, but we will not be taking any questions from Facebook. Those in our audience wishing to submit a question may do so by sending a message within the Q&A window. On the bottom of your screen, you will see the option to open the Q&A box where you will be able to type and send your question. I will now turn to Taulan Bala of the Socialist Party to provide his brief opening remarks. Mr. Bala, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, and I hope you are doing all well. And uh, thank you very much also for this invitation to be part of uh, such a panel talking about our recent general elections. That uh, is true, the Socialist Party uh, won these elections by a slight, uh, slight majority. And uh, I want to say from the beginning that uh, we are not going to sing the ABBA song the winners takes it all. Uh, we think that uh, we have got a very uh, uh, huge responsibility ahead of us. And uh, we are ready to work together with the opposition to unite the country in every campaign, in every country, like in US, in the last presidential elections, there is a, there is a, lot, a lot of uh, division in the country. But after the campaign, all the political actors need to work together to unite the country. Uh, and I would like to uh, re-emphasize uh, once again what Ned Price, State Department spokesperson, said yesterday, that uh, the first congratulations go to the Albanian people uh, because elections are always a celebration of democracy. And uh, second is that uh, we need to continue the strong and very close partnership with the United States. And third, which I would uh, also underline is that uh, I personally also like the State Department did, I commend the uh, campaign of the opposition. It was a very strong campaign, fought until the end. And uh, what is uh, fourth and uh, uh, very important is that uh, uh, every political party now has to respect the results of these legitimate elections. Complaints must be followed 
only through legal procedures and all political parties must understand that Albania has a very important European integration agenda ahead and we all need to work together. When we speak about elections, we all had good and bad results. We as Socialist Party had very good results in some areas and we had very bad results in some other areas uh, that we didn't expect. And I think also the opposition had very good results in some areas and uh, I don't know what were their expectations, but uh, surely uh, 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 everybody has to understand that uh, you win somewhere and you lose somewhere. Uh, uh, SP had very good results uh, in some areas, DP increased itself with 10% uh, from the last elections, but uh, what is generally accepted, I think by all, that elections confirmed all the main electoral polls before elections, like Ipsos, Euronews and others that uh, had predicted Socialist Party to have uh, the majority on its own. Uh, when it comes to, uh, uh, because I spoke a little bit about the results, what is important to stress are the standards of the last general elections of 25th of April. In this regard, uh, I think we have all to refer to what the judges of these elections said, which is the Odir mission on its preliminary report that was released uh, on Monday. And uh, who stated clearly that the election process, and I'm reading the report, was calm and the secrecy of the vote was mostly respected. And when it comes to the counts, the process was, was largely transparent and smooth. And here I have to remind our, uh, our position that has been clear during the last four years that uh, I think DP now got convinced that we have to uh, depolitize the the administration of the elections when it comes to members of the electoral committees or also the counters. Now we have uh, we had another proof that um, uh, political appointed counters uh, are uh, are hearing the let's say the orders that come the, the orders that come from uh, the political parties, but and uh, they have to understand that they have to respect the law first. So I think that one of the first uh, points of our next electoral reform would, would be the depolitization of the members of the electoral administration. We must not continue with this uh, example anymore. We are the only remaining country, maybe in Europe, that we still have political parties who are voted and political parties who count the vote of the people. Dear friends, the reason why these elections has been considered not only by Odir, but also by our European partners, United States. I, I mentioned the State Department uh, spokesperson statement yesterday, uh, are free and fair, are connected also with the efforts that uh, the government did, and you mentioned, uh, to include uh, and to work with the opposition while preparing the legal framework. You know that June 5th uh, agreement that was sponsored or supported by US Embassy in Tirana, and your ambassador Yuri Kim deserves a lot of uh, uh, a lot of thanks about making this deal possible. Uh, uh, or also, uh, uh, let's say, part of the fact that uh, DP officially boycotted the parliament since uh, uh, February 2019. So uh, we had a deal out of the parliament, and we had to implement the deal within the parliament. In the fact. Uh, uh, due to, to uh, due to the last changes uh, that we did uh, to the electoral code, uh, for the first time, the Albanian people had the possibility to have two votes, one for the parties and one for the candidates. And I'm very happy for that because it gives more legitimacy to every politician. And also it helps on democratizing all political parties because it's the, the will of the people who decide not only who's going to be the government, but who's going to be in uh, in the uh, political groups, either in majority or in the opposition. And we are conscious that uh, several previous OD recommendations remain, remain unaddressed and need to be considered in uh, the next parliamentary session as soon as possible, where too I would have to uh, underline the need to have a bigger reform 
when it comes to political parties finances. We saw, I saw a little bit uh, uh, some of the expenses that political parties did with, uh, uh, for example, in the, in the social networks. And uh, I think that uh, uh, more transparency need to be done on this regard. Uh, as a final remark, I need to stress the importance of these elections for the sake of the European integration. Uh, meeting the standards and organizing free and fair elections will open the green light for the start of the negotiations with Albania and North Macedonia. As our Prime Minister Ederama has already stressed, in this stage, we need to strengthen the cooperation with the opposition to go ahead with the reforms needed to continue the integration process. We have the majority to govern, but uh, we don't have a majority in the parliament to make uh, substantial reforms which need qualified majority. And therefore, that's why I want to restress again our offer to Democratic Party, which is the only political group that has the, has the numbers to, uh, to form the uh, 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 political group in the parliament, that uh, uh, we are ready to work together. Uh, we are ready to sh share responsibilities when it comes to our common, uh, uh, our common efforts towards European integration. And I look forward to meet, meeting the new elected colleagues like Yorida and Klaida uh, uh, in, in September uh, once the new parliament is convened. So thank you very much. Uh, this is all for the first intervention. And you know, I'm, I'm here to, to respond to any question that uh, the, the participants will have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bala. Uh, we'll now turn to Yorida Tabaku of the Democratic Party. Yorida, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Paul, and also to the other participants. Thanks for this opportunity. I am a little bit tired myself. I just finished counting this morning in my constituency votes for candidates. Uh, since Sunday, uh, we finished uh, this morning 8 a.m. So it was quite a long process and also very um, emotional for some of our uh, counters. But uh, I am very happy that uh, all of our administration managed this process, process with, uh, with, with integrity, which I cannot say from, uh, from the other side. Um, I am um, very happy because we run a great campaign. And in my constituency, but in Tirana in general, I increased the result of my party by 55% votes more for the Democratic Party in my constituency. Um, I ran a positive campaign. The party, Democratic Party of Albania, started a process with the program two years ago. Uh, we had a very good team. Um, of course, we uh, during the campaign, but also previously, it is uh, during elections, it is... Uh, uh, normal also to make small mistakes, but I believe that one of the biggest mistakes that we made was believing that elections uh, in Albania uh, could be won with democratic means, uh, which uh, um, is not on, uh, only my concern now, but is also the concern of all Albanian people. Uh, in all my political career, Mr. McCarthy and my colleagues can confirm, um, I have tried to, to maintain um, a pro-European path. Uh, uh, during my time in parliament and out of parliament, uh, but also with a focus on solutions, never on the political fight, uh, never on um, uh, creating conflict that was not necessary. Uh, the elections in Albania, 25th of April, um, are coming from um, the 5th of June changes of the electoral code, which were consensual. Oh, yes, of course, they were consensual. Uh, but uh, the, the consensus of June 5th was, uh, was uh, not respected. Uh, unilateral changes were made, which favored the, op the, the government now. Uh, the unilateral changes uh, were related with the creation of small parties, with the opposition not being able to run in a, uh, 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 as an opposition with lists, uh, and other small changes, which at the time uh, your ambassador, Ms. Yuri uh, 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 Kim, did actually strongly say uh, that uh, unilateral changes were in breach of the June 5th agreement. Uh, the government worked uh, during the last two years um, just uh, to win elections. The government did not work for the European future of the country, but made everything possible uh, 
by uh, investing in winning elections as the I, and I'm quoting uh, uh, I, I heard Mr. Bala say that uh, he was quoting the, uh, the OD report saying that the electoral process was smooth but the OD report says that the election day was uh, ran smoothly and of course the election fraud does not happen on election day the election fraud with this government happened during the last one and a half year uh, as the OD report says a, wide, a structure widespread vote buying has occurred during the last parliamentary elections uh, from a total there are there is a total of 15 lawsuits be uh, brought to the special anti corruption prosecutor uh, for vote buying uh, and there is of course uh, in several regions uh, of Albania, uh, criminal groups, unauthorized youngsters gathering outside centers. In addition, the government uh, used the private da data of citizens for these elections. Um, what I can say now uh, uh, that um, uh, having uh, all government against us, using, as Odir says, every possible single state resource and public administration for election, um, uh, changing the, elect the, the election ballots three weeks before elections by not putting the candidate names on the ballot, which we all agreed that we wanted to vote for candidates, but they removed the names and they put numbers, uh, has resulted in the most, uh, the, the, the highest number of invalid uh, ballot paper, 85,000 ballot paper are now invalid because people were mistaking the number of the candidate with the number of the party. There was a ballot paper with only numbers, which voters did not have the time, the right time to uh, to focus on it. So um, criminals, uh, unfortunately, even though the Democratic Party of Albania and LSI did uh, uh, fight very much for decriminalization of parliament and uh, municipalities, and luckily uh, people with uh, criminal records and people which uh, are subject of election fraud of the prosecution files uh, for the election fraud in Dibra and in Duras, which were made public all over the world, are now in parliament. Next parliament will have eight people, which are uh, part of the criminal groups who bought elections and uh, used criminals for, uh, for buying elections. Uh, of course, um, uh, these are problems that we stated before. These are problems that the OD report mentions. These are problems that everyone uh, mentioned during this, uh, this period. Most of these problems were actually uh, stated out by, uh, by the free media and press. Uh, the very few actually uh, who have um, uh, who have uh, spoken uh, and uh, going back to the main question that you raised at the beginning of uh, of the panel uh, do you believe that the endemic corruption do i believe that the endemic corruption which has accompanied albania for a long period of time but which unfortunately during the last uh, four to eight year uh, has um, become a state capture uh, corruption, as the Transparency International uh, report says, will be fought. Uh, I'm sorry to say, but uh, this will not be possible. Free and fair elections were one of the main conditions for Albania's path towards uh, EU integration. Um, several uh, uh, EU uh, member countries did speak also through their members of parliament before elections saying that vote buying will not be any more tolerated. And saying that vote buying will not be more any more to tolerated is, uh, is um, um, uh, an accusation itself uh, very hard and very uh, uh, actually uh, uh, very big. Uh, which uh, in this case uh, uh, makes uh, Albania's path towards EU very much complicated, much more complicated than it was before. Uh, when we started uh, in opposition eight years ago, when this government started, there were three conditions for uh, entering the EU and starting the accession uh, process. Unfortunately, today there are 15 conditions. Uh, even though Albania um, deserved to be uh, a candidate country a long time ago and start the accession process a long time ago, because of political will and because of uh, acts of this government uh, which went, which went uh, uh, backwards, um, uh, it was not made possible. Uh, speaking on behalf of the opposition, I can say that uh, if there is one project uh, 
uh, uh, which remains uh, um, a national priority and which remains also uh, a national vi uh, vision for the Democratic Party of Albania is the European integration uh, process. Me personally, but everyone in the Democratic Party, and I believe also LSI Glida will speak for this uh, herself, uh, believe that the only way forward is the European integration process. We'll do whatever it is in our hands for this process to go ahead. Uh, but uh, one of the preconditions for, for this process was fair, free and fair elections. Uh, and these elections uh, were not free and fair. If uh, uh, Odir recognizes uh, this problem, and if uh, Odir, Odir uh, evaluates three groups of pres uh, pressure, first of all, pressure on voters and limitation of the right to vote, I'm quoting Odir, misuse of public administration, uh, advantaging the ruling Socialist Party, and vote buying and intimid intimidation of voters, uh, uh, I believe uh, that uh, the free and fair elections uh, uh, will continue to be a condition for Albania, and I'm sorry to say, but uh, as a politician for the future parliament, I feel shameful that we are not able to guarantee free and fair elections. And I will finish by what I started at the beginning. Uh, we thought that with the increased participation, we thought with, that with a program, with a good team, uh, we thought that with a positive campaign, uh, we thought that with uh, talking to people for solutions and not using criminals and public uh, resources, uh, we could win. Uh, but um, uh, it, we, these elections showed that, uh, unfortunately, democratic means uh, are not used and are used, are not used anymore uh, by by these governments. Uh, unprecedentedly, five days before elections, the government also issued a ban for citizens coming from Greece and northern Macedonia uh, for an obligatory quarantine on for, of 14 days from their uh, arrival date, uh, stopping stopping Albanians from voting. So there was there is a long list of problems that accompany this, uh, this campaign, which uh, I think that the uh, primary duty of the next parliament would be, first of all, investigating electoral crimes, as the State Department said, as uh, all EU ambassadors uh, said ye yesterday in their statements, uh, but also um, starting uh, investigation uh, committees and inquiry committees uh, on how Albania can finally have free and fair elections. Thank you, Paul. Great, thank you very much, uh, uh, Ms. Tabaku. We're going to turn to, uh, I told you that this was gonna be an interesting discussion and I'm glad that our participants are being very frank and forthright um, in um, their assessments of these uh, recent elections. That's what we were hoping for. Uh, we're going to turn to Klaida Josha from, uh, from the LSI. Klaida, the floor is yours. Hello, Paul. Hello to everyone. It is a pleasure to be here with you today. And I really thank the International Republican Institute for this invitation. Uh, this is a really important moment for Albania as we just finished the elections after the 25 June. Um, really long campaign, a different campaign, even due to the pandemic. Uh, of course, this changed uh, all the, the way that we used to do the campaigns before. And as Yorida said, we try to do a very good campaign, very positive campaign, work with people, uh, have a good team, have people with integrity in our lists. But of course, sometimes this is not enough uh, to win the elections, especially when you have to deal with a regime uh, in front of you. Um, unfortunately, the 25th of June marked a very dark day for our democracy and for the future of our country. And this is due to many reasons. Um, first of all, uh, our opposition followed a wrong strategy in the last four years, starting with the relinquishing of our mandates and leaving the parliament. Um, and secondly, by abolishing the local elections in 2019. Even though these actions were taken under um, a lot of pressure, and on a specific moment where the circumstances and the behavior of the government uh, actually was undurable, uh, and it, especially because we didn't have, uh, we, we lacked the, the constitutional court at the moment. Um, this made it all impossible for us to complete the mandate inside this institution. Uh, still, this was a very extreme movement which the country is even paying for today. 
um, saying this, it is important to remind to everyone that it does not give the government the right to take uh, one-sided decisions, uh, which are directly affecting democracy and our people. The government violated the agreement that was reached on the 5th of June last year by all the political parties, uh, which had to do with the elections and went ahead to make changes in the constitution and on the electoral code, making it impossible for the smaller parties to run fairly uh, in the elections. Changes in the, in the code um, brought inequality uh, in votes that were then translated into uh, mandates, confusion in the way that the people would go to vote as the ballot paper was introduced to our citizens uh, just three weeks before the elections, first with names, and then we change from names because our politicians, unfortunately, are afraid of names and really good candidates uh, inside of uh, the, the political parties. So we changed to numbers to make it even more confusion. And one of the other reasons to do this is because they wanted to, to have as many invalid papers as possible. Because as you can see today, we have more than 85,000 invalid ballot papers found in the boxes. Uh, and uh, most of them, the majority of these ballot papers were votes for the opposition. Uh, the government, by having all the powers in one hand, media, justice, local government, executive, of course, they had all the mobilities to put a lot of pressure to citizens, used public administration and public funds to intimidate and buy votes all across the country. The scandal of personal data leakage uh, by producing a system of citizens' data with IDs, personal information, uh, where they work, live, their financial status, uh, and by gathering most of these data by eAlbania, that is an official uh, site handled by the government for keeping citizens' personal data, is not just a big scandal, but is a threat to our national security and is a crime that needs to be urgently investigated. The challenges of our country uh, in the next few years are very important, um, which the opposition and our party at SMI, we need to handle following a strict strategy to which we all have to comply with, starting with producing a fair electoral code, more simple for the people to understand, and also we need to be in front of a very dangerous regime, which we now have in front of us, which is closer to autocracy rather than democracy. For SMI, I think we will need to face uh, big changes within the party on the way we function, to grow competition inside the party, and also uh, to open our party to new and intellectual members. And this is very, very important for the future. Uh, but while we face this, these challenges uh, inside of, uh, of the party, the country is facing an even bigger challenge that of massive immigration. Uh, 700,000 Albanians have left in the last six years, unfortunately, and more than seven, another 700,000 people are ready to leave the country uh, in the days to come. To me, this is the most serious and urgent matter that our politicians need to focus on their daily work. Uh, not forgetting the most, that most of the people that are leaving the country are young, and middle-class professionals. Um, until a few years ago, to be honest, um, I used to believe that Albania would be a member of EU uh, in nearly 10 years. Today, I'm convinced that for us, this will be a very long and difficult process. Albania needs a normal leadership that works for the people and with the people that is not even close to this uh, anymore. Uh, we need to build strong foundations for the rule of law, to respect human rights, because nobody is talking anymore about these issues, which are very crucial to, to all Albanian citizens, uh, handling property issues, tackling matters like corruption and crime, which unfortunately are not just part of our system, but they have become part of our behavior and mentality. And this is even more difficult to tackle. So what we really need um, in the next months and years really is a big change in our political figures that in 30 years continue to keep Albania under a very long and tiring transition and have turned politics into a tool for personal power. 
Um, unfortunately, these elections did not mark uh, a completion of one of the main conditions that EU had for Albania, which was free and fair elections. Uh, according to my view, but not just my view, uh, to all the people that worked with us, to all the citizens that went to vote believing for change and this never happened, uh, I think this, these were the worst elections that Albania has had uh, since we started our democracy, um, which is not even a, a democracy anymore. Um, so I think this will be a tough way for Albania um, in order to, uh, to produce many answers for the member states in the next, uh, in the next few weeks and months. Um, and it will be difficult. It will be difficult for the first intergovernmental meeting as well to get a date. Uh, I'm sure in this, I used to be Minister of European Integration. I know how it works. I know how much they monitor all the process. Um, European Commission is only one instrument. Uh, there are many other instruments that are being used to, to monitor all over the country and to see what is going on at the moment. Um, but I still believe that change is very near, even though elections have just, uh, have just finished. And opposition has a very strong tool now in their hands, and that is parliament. And I think everybody that is going to be in that, that parliament has to work for Albanian citizens and for their European future and to keep Albanian citizens here in Albania. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Josha. We're now going to uh, turn to uh, questions from the audience. And as a reminder, questions can be submitted through the Q&A function of uh, the Zoom webinar. Um, this can be done by clicking on the Q&A found at the bottom of the Zoom screen and typing and submitting a question for the panel in the window that pops up. We've gotten quite a bit of questions, um, a lot of interest in this discussion. These were all very interesting presentations and uh, we love to get a debate going here at the IRI. Um, a couple questions here from the audience. I wanna to turn to Mr. Bala for this. Um, there have been some uh, accusations that citizens' private information uh, was mishandled during these um, elections for political purposes. Um, what, what can you say about that? And how do we, uh, if it has indeed taken place, um, how can we uh, keep this from happening in the future? This was something that uh, Ms. Joshua brought up as well. So I would pose that question to Mr. Bala, please. So thank you. Uh... There is an investigation going through about this from uh, the Special Prosecutor Against Corruption. And uh, I think that we have all to uh, wait uh, until the investigation goes through and uh, finalizes it. But uh, I want to, to tell you that there is nothing more special than every party in US or in Europe does. When uh, you go, you do canvassing and you do, uh, you go and uh, meet people to convince them to vote. And then you create your database with the uh, possible voters that are going to vote for your party. So I think uh, all the three parties represented here have uh, the same database and I'm for sure, I'm sure for that, I know it. So uh, no, there is nothing to, there is nothing to hide in this. Uh, also, the special uh, commissioner on on uh, on uh, on data privacy has been investigating. We have offered all the information we had, and uh, what was uh, what was told in the media was a fake news, and all those data that were were sent in the media were fake. And uh, after the investigation. Everybody will have to will understand that uh, this issue was, was used for electoral purposes, and there was there was nothing uh, no, there was nothing true on that. There was no misuse of uh, personal data by the Socialist Party, without the agreement of the of the those who were contacted by us. And uh, I, I want to reiterate once again that um, we do the same campaign as uh, every well-organized party does 
uh, all over the uh, United States or also in Europe. And one thing I want to, to stress uh, that is linked to what my colleagues, my dear colleagues said uh, before. First, uh, we, have to, we have to be honest with each other. Uh, on Monday, both uh, Democratic Party and SMI proclaimed that they won elections. And that's very good because uh, they did better than the last elections. I mean, uh, I, I mean DP. Uh, but uh, one on if you on Monday you say that you own elections, and then on on uh, Wednesday when the uh, the uh, the results goes out, you say that uh, you don't agree with the results. This is a question of uh, uh, of losing face in front of the people. Secondly, uh, answering to what my dear colleague uh, Clyda said regarding the invalid ballots. It, it is not true. And uh, uh, you have the right, every, every party has the right to make a recount of the invalid ballot papers. I can tell you about the constituency of Elbasan, where I'm elected. From 9,000 votes, 6,000 have voted in favor of Socialist Party and in favor of number eight, party number eight, thinking that they were voting for me, but instead they had an invalid uh, vote. So uh, it is not true that most of the invalid votes are in favor of the opposition. I told you one constituency, but you have the right to follow this complaint through procedures. So elections are finished, but your right to follow your complaints through legal means and institution is there so please do it uh, and uh, follow any any complaint before before uh, uh, before bringing the same the same uh, political speech uh, uh, that you did also four years before thank you thank you very much uh, mr bell i'm going to turn to yorita tabaku with a related question um given that allegations and charges that have been made uh, with regard to election fraud on the part of the opposition, including what we've just been talking about here. Um, what does this mean for the opposition's plan to work uh, with, with uh, the Socialist Party, which has uh, won these elections? Uh, Mr. Bala put on the table during his um, uh, initial presentation an offer to work together. Um, can we expect uh, uh, collaboration or, um, uh, or will there be a further boycott of these elections moving forward? Thank you, Paul, for your, uh, for your question. I'm going to spare you the normal Albanian political debate and the reply to Mr. Bala because I want to uh, speak to you and to, uh, to the respect of the, of the people who have uh, made questions, which I'm actually just reading right now. Um, uh, what will happen next? Of course, everyone is in, is interested in, uh, in knowing what will uh, what will happen next. Uh, I cannot say right now what decision it will be taken because, uh, of course, the party structures uh, uh, would have to to decide on that. Uh, but for the moment, and and as Clyda said, uh, and we have to learn from from the past. We have to learn the past. We have to use the past uh, um, uh, to change also for better for for ourselves. Uh, but what I can say now is that we will follow the legality of uh, the the elections uh, at every instance. Uh, we will make sure that all allegations uh, made not by the opposition, not by uh, citizens, not by media, but by the Odir report, uh, uh, are uh, actually uh, investigated. We will make sure that uh, uh, elections uh, uh, are one of the main topics that internationals will discuss, uh, that the government will be made responsible for. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, we will see how to take a decision to move on the way uh, forward. Of course, I am a person who does not see, who does not blame others, who does not uh, only put the fault on others. Uh, and uh, as I started discussing, saying that democracy is at risk, and actually democracy is at risk now, uh, with whatever happened uh, with elections, 
I believe that we will also have a process of uh, analyzing research uh, for our internal purposes in terms of uh, uh, what were the internal decisions and what were the internal uh, processes that we could change uh, to improve ourselves. Uh, I told you at the beginning that um, in my constituency, I increased votes for DP by 55%. 55% is uh, unseen, is uh, one of the biggest figures in, in the country. Uh, but it still, it was, uh, it was not enough because my people who are unemployed, who just believe in my party, who believe for change, uh, were unable uh, to win against directors of customs, cadaster, legalization, uh, um, electricity, utility. These were the people I had in front of me. Uh, I did a civilized campaign. I talked to people uh, for for the solutions, for the program, and I had in front of me uh, a party with no program. Uh, in these elections, we have uh, a small party who got 33,000 votes and has three members of parliament, and LSI has 100,000 votes and has four members of parliament. Uh, Clyda started by saying that the system changed uh, to be unfair, to not let the parties compete in an equal uh, and free uh, free manner. So uh, I believe that we will do both, uh, also internal process, but what is important, legality of elections and following up all ODIR uh, recommendations at any stance. Uh, and um, now I can, I'm sorry to say, but uh, continue fighting for democracy. I really believe that in these elections, the future of the country was at stake and it is at stake. The future of Albania is, is at stake. Uh, at the end of the day, everything happens because of the political will, and I'm sorry that the government is, did not have at main interest Albanian's political will, but their own political will for power uh, and, um, of course, uh, being in government. So um, uh, I believe that a long process is ahead of us. A long fight is ahead of us. Uh, at the first day, uh, first days after the election, um, uh, we did uh, uh, go in public and say that increased participation for DP showed that figures were uh, increasing the support for DP, also for LSI. Uh, we wanted to make sure that this process uh, would finish and our counters and our people who were counting still votes and managing the process would do this with integrity and with, uh, with no pressure. Uh, and we did this for the people who administered uh, uh, elections. I would do the same now, uh, even knowing the, the results. I would do the same just to keep people motivated and to keep the, the, the process uh, in its whole uh, integrity. I'm sorry, but I did not have people with guns in my constituency, as most probably in Elbasan had or other areas had. I just had poor people without a job with me who wanted to change, and unfortunately, we did not have it. So thank you, Paul. Thank you uh, very much, Yorida. I'm gonna, going to uh, turn to Clyda now uh, with a question. It's related, um, but the uh, international observers and domestic observers uh, pointed out that um, there was quite a bit of voter intimidation and in purchasing of votes during the elections, particularly in uh, rural communities. and. I'm wondering um, what uh, what you would say about how to combat that, and also maybe um, you'd give us your assessment of whether that was a fair criticism. Uh, but most importantly, what are we going to do about it? It is, on, it is not only a fair criticism. It is so real that it's uh, painful, to be honest. Not only in rural areas, but also in the middle of our cities. Um, with everyone. Intimidation started with public administration by gathering the IDs, uh, asking people to vote for the SP, uh, by intimidating the teachers. You have a statement of the prime minister just a while ago asking the teachers uh, to think well uh, for which party they are going to vote because if they don't vote for the SP, they might get fired they might not have a job uh, by the end of the, the elections. Uh, and these statements are public, uh, so everyone can find them and look at them. 
Uh, also, this government used uh, two, uh, two big matters in Albania. First of all, earthquake and people that lost their homes, going there, getting the lists, uh, trying to give people uh, homes, the ones that were voting for the Socialist Party uh, and everybody else that uh, had, um, had a person that had all this data and knew that they were voting for other parties, they still, even today, do not have nothing, living outside. Uh, and this is really painful. Um, and secondly, they used uh, pandemic. They used vaccine as a tool to get votes. Uh, in their way of campaigning uh, through, I mean, throughout the campaign, the sentences were exactly like this. If you want to get vaccinated, you vote for SP. This is not a campaign uh, playing with people's life, playing with people's future. People are scared, not just in Albania, like, but like everywhere. So of course, thinking that uh, uh, Edi Rama and his party are like gods here, uh, taking away the virus uh, and nobody else could do it. Some of them, yes, believe that this, must, uh, this might be the case. Um, and don't forget that Albania is a poor country. It's not a rich country. And in a poor country and where education does not function well, it is a problem. It is a problem because people can be bought with very little, just with flour or a sandwich. Uh, and this is sad. And it happens everywhere. I'm telling you, not just in the rural areas, but in all the biggest cities, it happens right here in Tirana, which is the heart of, uh, of Albania. What we have to do for this, this is a very difficult question because um, first of all, the government has everything in their hand. For this phenomenon to, uh, to be taken away, you need justice. And there are still many cases of fraud in the elections uh, that are still there as cases not opened uh, by the justice system. Uh, even SPAC is not handling these cases right now. So we needed an answer before we went to this election so that we could give an example, we could give a model to everybody that yes, if you buy votes, if you do something to intimidate uh, people, you go to prison. If you use criminals in the campaign, you could go to prison. But no, this did not happen. So unfortunately, justice is, uh, is the key answer to this. Uh, justice first and the will of our politicians, the mentality of our politicians to stop thinking about their own power and their own seats. Because while they're thinking about their own power, everything they have in mind is how to buy votes how to buy people's future in this country. Uh, this is why I also mentioned in my speech that changing political figures, having new people in politics, having people with integrity in politics is absolutely crucial. This will even change the way that we, that we think about elections and the way that we work uh, for our people. Thank you. Thank you very much, Clyda. Um, I wanted to give uh, Mr. Bala an opportunity to respond, but I also want to ask him, um, you pointed out in your remarks that there is a heavy duty for the, uh, uh, for the new incoming government and you don't want to underestimate the duty and, and the responsibility that you have. Uh, one thing um, that uh, needs to be addressed, um, and, and not just recently, but for decades now, is the corruption uh, issue. Uh, and um, a lot of uh, US effort, in particular USAID for the past 30 years, um, has gone into the effort to combat uh, corruption and organized crime. Uh, most recently with the develop of the US Albania Transparency Academy, which uh, IRI is looking forward to launching soon uh, in uh, Tirana along with its partners, NDI, IFAS and SIPE as well. And we look forward to working with you all on that. How can, how can we all, international donors and implementing organizations best support Albania's democracy, in particular the uh, fight against corruption 
um, given Albania's EU aspirations. Mr. Bala? Thank you, Paul. Uh, you forgot uh, the main investment that is done uh, by the United States and the European Union, which is the justice reform. Uh, thanks to the justice reform now we have in place all the new institutions of uh, new justice. So uh, I mentioned before one of the complaints that was done by the opposition with the with the personal data, and I, I mentioned the special prosecutor against corruption, which is an institution that is also following a lot of other complaints. Um, I know that the uh, Democratic Party has done some, I have done some in the special prosecutor against corruption again, uh, related to, to some uh, issues on the electoral uh, uh, campaign. And uh, uh, as every Albanian citizen, I would like to see results by the special prosecutor uh, against corruption. And uh, uh, I think that uh, this is the, 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 the hope of uh, most of the Albanians that we'll see in the near future um, big results. A lot of results have been seen up to now. And uh, mentioning what uh, Ambassador Yuri Kim said, that uh, the, the results for the last year of this special prosecutor have been very positive. Uh, you know that uh, during the last year, Albania did a, did a very strong uh, shot against organized crime by, uh, by putting them under, uh, 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 under the control of their assets and uh, a lot of assets have been already uh, taken by the state and a lot of others are being investigated. So I am very, I am very optimistic that uh, we will uh, have uh, good results when it comes to fight against corruption. Uh, and, uh, uh, the, 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 and I know that this is a very, very crucial uh, homework that we need to deliver we need to have a, 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 a track record of results uh, when it comes to fight against corruption. But if we see, if we see uh, 2020 or and the first three months of 2021, comparing to uh, previous years, it, it shows that a lot of results are being delivered. But I do agree that uh, we need uh, we need uh, more uh, work together. And since maybe it is my last uh, intervention, as time the timing is uh, finishing, uh, once again I want to reiterate our uh, our uh, convention that uh, we, yes we are the winners, but uh, uh, we understand that uh, there is a, a common responsibility. Uh, for all political uh, stakeholders in Albania to work, to, get, to, to work together in the next parliament and not only to bring forward uh, the big reforms. So, uh, uh, and I, we have a lot, of, uh, a lot of proposals. I know that also DP had some uh, proposals uh, regarding uh, some big reforms that we need to do them together. And uh, so, you know, that uh, big reforms need either three-fifths in the parliament or two thirds of the parliament. So uh, ready to work all together in the framework of the European integration. Thank you very much, Mr. Bala. I'll turn uh, back to uh, Yorida. I mean, um, what, what do you think are the best ways to address the corruption uh, issue? I know it's a very large one and justice reform is related uh, to that problem and thank you for pointing that out Mr. Bala what what are uh, what are uh, the democratic party's plans in this regard moving forward what can it put on the table um thank you paul do you hear me yeah okay thank you paul um Actually, we also had uh, a specific uh, part of our electoral program related with the justice reform. I'm sorry that the government did not have an electoral program at all, but uh, focusing on, on the just reform, on the justice reform, uh, we want it to work and to function. 
uh, we want solid uh, and strong justice uh, uh, institutions. And uh, uh, if today, I, I'm not aware that Mr. Bala did bring cases to SPAC, but if today uh, we have 53 cases uh, to SPAC and 150 cases for election fraud, to prosecution of city district uh, uh, prosecution is because we want to put these bodies uh, uh, at the desk. We want these institutions to work, uh, and uh, uh, we believe that if the justice reform was implemented as it was intended, uh, not changed uh, uh, outside of uh, political pressure, we would have seen results uh, until now. I am sorry that we were not able to see results until now for the justice reform. There were spor sporadic cases of uh, um, sizing uh, uh, illegal activities uh, uh, related to mafia and to crime, uh, but nothing, nothing related with political uh, crime. Uh, we have brought cases uh, uh, to, to the specific institutions um, uh, regarding um, uh, corruption specifically related with uh, politics, uh, election uh, fraud, but also uh, specific uh, uh, cases uh, which were brought to, to district prosecution uh, for use of uh, public resources uh, in elections, but also for uh, other accusations. This is why I want to see these institutions work work, uh, Mr. McCarthy. I want to see results because uh, we have voted in 2016 for the justice reform for changes in the constitution, which again, when you were unilaterally changed by the government uh, uh, um, uh, in their favor, and we have not seen these institutions yet show results. Uh, if we brought cases to these institutions is that we believe uh, in the justice reform is that we believe that these institutions uh, should make a difference. I have not yet seen a difference uh, until now. Uh, my party's political will is that everything, everything uh, uh, that is needed for the European integration of the country should be made possible. Everything needed towards changing the status quo, everything needed towards fighting corruption from our side will be given but the political will from the uh, opposition is not enough the political will in this uh, uh, in this regard should come from the government and since this will be my conclusive uh, uh, remark uh, i want to thank um, uh, your institution but also uh, other uh, us institutions who were very strong in speaking for elections. I want to personally thank the US ambassador uh, who uh, unfortunately in Albania of 2021, it should, not, it should not be like this, but it was like this in these elections. She went personally in counting centers, making sure that counting was continuing and counters were free of criminal uh, pressure like it happened in El Basan. Uh, I am sorry that um, we had to use these tools uh, but then this is what friends are for. Um, I am very thankful to whatever uh, your institution is doing also for the uh, Transparency Academy. Uh, I believe that it will be a strong tool, a very strong tool uh, for fighting corruption. Uh, and I will personally uh, invest everything that I can, uh, but also my party, uh, to make this a strong institution and to speak. We have had also a panel about corruption, uh, and I believe that this is an area where we can uh, greatly contribute related also to the justice reform. I want to conclude by saying that uh, this is not the end of a process. This is uh, the start of a new fight for my party, for the opposition. Uh, this is the start of a fight uh, with different means, uh, with a very much um, uh, improved propaganda from the government, with, uh, of course, in some cases, uh, 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 media support. Uh, but this is a fight very much important for Albania and for its uh, uh, European integration. Uh, so I want to ask you, uh, in my name personally, but also to, for the, uh, in the name of Democratic Party of Albania, to still continue supporting Albania, uh, to still continue supporting Albanian politics, and to still uh, believing uh, uh, that uh, 
change only come through, comes through politics and non, not, uh, not other means. Uh, this will be uh, my motto in politics and uh, I believe it has been until now. I will continue personally to give my uh, uh, contributions, small, uh, for the uh, European integration process from one side, uh, but also for the anti-corruption fight uh, jointly uh, with, uh, with your institutions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Yorita. And on that positive note, uh, we've come to the end of our time. Uh, and I wanted to thank, uh, first of all, uh, Mr. Bala and uh, Yorita Tabaku and Clyda Josha for their participation. We are watching um, very closely with much interest uh, what happens in the post-election period. Uh, we, um, it was interesting to hear from the panelists uh, some offers of uh, uh, political cooperation moving forward. It'd be interesting to see that and also to really tackle the major problems at hand, including, of course, the corruption issue and also the electoral process uh, as well. So moving forward. So thank you very much to our three panelists. And also thank you very much uh, to the audience. I'm sorry if I was not able to get to all your questions. Uh, there was obviously keen interest in this discussion and we look forward to um, uh, cooperating in Albania and also looking forward to having uh, further discussions like this one. Everybody have a great day and look forward to seeing you again at IRI. Bye-bye. Thank you. It was a great pleasure. Thank you.